Did you know that the very idea of environmental conservation has its roots along the Hudson River? By the mid-1800s, artists like Thomas Cole had made the scenery along the river famous and prized. By that same time, industries along the river had begun to take a toll on that same scenery. The tanning and lumber industries had cut down entire forests in the Catskill Mountains, and the cliffs along the Palisades were being mined for rock to make buildings, and were rapidly disappearing. By 1885, New York's Constitution required the state to preserve large tracts of land in the Catskill Mountains and in the Adirondack Mountains along the Hudson's source. In 1900, activists in our area, concerned about the disappearing cliffs along the river, fought to form the Palisades Interstate Park, which preserved much of the land along the river, from Fort Lee, New Jersey, to Bear Mountain in New York. New York's governor at the time was Teddy Roosevelt, who later created several national parks in the United States as our president. In spite of these efforts, industry continued to take a toll along the river. During the first half of the 1900s, it was considered perfectly normal and acceptable for factories to dump any excess or waste chemicals right into the river, and the river was dying. In Terrytown, residents could tell what color GM was painting the trucks in the factory along the banks of the Hudson by the color of the water in the river, which was full of excess paint from the factory. In Hastings, chemicals were dumped from a factory that made copper wire, and fish were dying in our part of the river. Upstream, chemicals called PCBs were being dumped into the river by two factories above Albany. This diagram from the Environmental Protection Agency of our government shows how organisms were affected all through 200 miles of the river. In the 1960s, small groups of environmentalists began to sue companies along the river for the damage they were causing and to stop more development from further destroying the river. Companies that work along the river began to clean up their act, and life is returning to our river. The work is not over. There is much still to be done. But it is now safe to swim and boat in the river in most places, and stricter regulations keep what goes into the river from hurting what lives there. <laughs>